Hello, my name's Mike, M0MSN, uh, and this video really is aimed at people that own the um, Yaesu 991A. Um, I've had some front-end problems with mine. Um, I used it a couple of times um, as a, uh, I suppose, as, as a monitoring station um, for a different band than the one I was transmitting on, but I managed to, uh, um, to blow the front end up on the the, uh, the 991A um, and uh, yeah it's just a warning really if you're going to use this radio don't use it in in the multiple operation um, situation where you're with or near other uh, radio operators on their equipment um, because I think it will probably destroy the front end of your radio as it has with mine anyway the video that follows is um, shows you how to resolve the issue, repair the radio, um, but I would say uh, it's uh, certainly something I will uh, not be taking or using uh, with other radios uh, in the future. And Mr Yesu, please, please comment, please come back to me uh, and explain why uh, this happens uh, and why the circuit is so um, sensitive, because I must admit my Kenwood doesn't suffer from it and neither does my ICOM but this particular radio does. Maybe it's okay, here's the problem, okay. Works well, no amp. Okay, just on standard. Put it back on, we'll receive. And then tell you later on, dies. See, nothing, dead, dead, dead. Turn it off, still dead. Put amp on. Okay, so it's not quite 30 years old in my calculation. Correct. <laughs> Dead. That's the problem. And I know what the problem is. A not so quick um, Google search um, revealed that uh, I am not alone with this issue. Um, I came across a website, uh, Comms Working Group. Um, which uh, showed the exact same issues um, as I was suffering from with my uh, 9918A. Um, and on further examination of the uh, website, um, they actually gave instructions of how to, uh, to sort the problem. So I followed them to the letter and uh, it did indeed resolve my problems uh, with the 9918A. Okay, so here's the problem. Let's see if I can get this focused. Okay, the problem is, right, between that one and that one, there should be a little surface mounted resistor um, of 150 ohms and it's only one tenth of a watt. Um, now the problem is the, the way the circuit's been designed that you can see there's a 
clamping diode there. Now this particular clamping diode um, has an operating voltage of 35 uh, volts uh, with a trigger point of uh, 350 volts, um, which is a bit crazy because uh, it only takes, um, what does it take? It only takes uh, three and a half, 3.9 volts uh, across this um, resistor uh, to reach that uh, tenth of a watt. And any more volts, of course, it burns out, which is exactly what it's done here. Um, so uh, there's two things we can do. First thing I'll do is I'm going to put a, uh, a quarter watt or possibly even a half watt um, 150 ohm resistor in there. Uh, see if that cures it. Um, the only thing it might do is, is endanger this particular um, resistor, um, which is a 68 ohm resistor, um, because obviously it's going to allow more wattage across the uh, across the uh, um, oh, what's it called relay. Um, uh, but it might be worth the gamble. Um, the other thing I can do is if it pops again or persists, I can put a, um, uh, remove this or leave it in play. It doesn't really make much difference, um, but I could put across it a Zener diode with a um, maximum voltage, regulator voltage of five, five volts. So if the um, uh, the the voltage from the RF goes above five volts, it will put it to earth. Um, yeah, I suppose that's a way around it. Anyway, let's uh, try to get a, uh, a resistor in there. I'll probably have to do that off camera. Right, I've uh, sewed the new uh, resistor in. Um, see if I can get it a bit more. Okay. It's obviously way too big for the circuit because it's not a surface mount, but it uh, hopefully won't blow as quickly as the surface mount, which is only a tenth of a watt. This is a a quarter watt, uh, 0.25. Um, so that will hopefully sort the problem out. I've put a blob of glue to hold it in place. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll go and test it now. Right, let's do a quick test. I've uh, stuck the uh, resistor in. And we'll just do a quick test. Ah, good, we got life. Now, we have... What are we on? Just IPO? Yep, just IPO. Uh, we'll just check that. Antenuator is off. IPO is just on standard IPO. Good. Because before we needed it on amp 1 for it to work. Yes, what about antenuator? Yes, that's working wonderfully. Excellent, let's just, uh, there we go, yeah, it's all good. So that's repaired, um, let's put the case back together. Let me consider what came out of there. This is the shattered um, resistor, by the way, all those bits. It really did go pop, um, and uh, I... Uh, We've managed to get that out of the box. I think there's some dirt amongst it as well, but that's uh, where they were. So I thought I'd use the um, the half watt um, just to give you some idea. This is my finger, and this is the the size of the the the, um, the fruit board resistor. It's quite small, but when you put that um, yeah, it's 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 humongous compared to the to the quarter watt. 
um, so I couldn't use it even though I wanted to go to half a watt. Um, so I've had to use a, a quarter watt uh, resistor. Um, you can see the difference in sizes there. Um, and I thought they must have sent me the wrong ones because they're, uh, you know, they're huge. But I've tested them and they are quarter, um, sorry, half watt. So it is what it is. Um, never mind. Anyway, it's a 150 ohm uh, quarter watt resistor that I've put in place of the surface mount version there. Um, so did it onto the same tabs that the, the surface mount came from because fortunately they're not damaged um, and uh, I was able to do that. Um, there's a, a blob of glue there. Um, I'm just about to put a second blob on uh, just to make sure that uh, it's well and truly um, held from mechanical damage. Um, the problem, of course, is that when you move these things around and they've got such big components uh, as this, um, they'll they'll rattle or, or move, um, and eventually either break the uh, break off the pad, or indeed break the track and the pad off of the board, which is what you don't want. Um, so I'll just glue it in uh, to make sure that it doesn't move or vibrate with the, uh, uh, so there's no mechanical damage that can happen. Uh, during handling or moving of the radio uh, and then uh, we'll stick it on the um, board and test it make sure it's all working um, again because obviously we've tested it already before gluing um, because the one thing you don't want to do is sold it all together glue it in and then find that it actually doesn't work so you have to take the glue off which is harder than desoldering so that's all been done um, and then we'll test it again to make sure it all works wonderfully um, okay, back in place. And can I in power on? <sighs> Let's have a go. I think that is successful. Okay. Trying to find a strong signal. Amazing. Okay, well, that's, that's awesome. That's what you're looking for, too. Can I clean that one off your car, yeah? I'm not going to do a car. 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 I'm not going to do a car.